Good afternoon, buon pomeriggio. It's a pleasure to, for me to be a speaker at this conference, even though I am here in Rome and not in Budapest, but it's not a problem. I want to thank all the organizers for giving me this opportunity. So uh, I will very quickly introduce my presentation, which is entitled uh, the, the Rivista Italiana di Scienza Politica and the Americanization of Italian Political Science, 1971 to 1991. Uh, we can move uh, to the other. Okay. And this is the journal uh, that uh, is at the center of my presentation. And uh, RISP, how it is known among the scholars, was funded in 1971. And uh, uh, my present, in my presentation, I will speak about the influence of the American political science over the new Italian political science. And the metaphor center periphery explain well this, this relationship. In my presentation, firstly, I will show how fundamental has been this journal for the development and institutionalization of political science in Italy. Then, how the supremacy of the hegemonical American political science, the mainstream model, was very clear on the pages of RISP. And finally, we will see how RISP opposed and tried to resist to the quantification and the hyper-technicalization of the discipline in order to give a peculiar identity to the Italian model challenging in this way uh, geopolitical centers and peripheries as the topic of the of our conference and the main character of this presentation is giovanni sartori uh, the, how can we move to the other uh, picture okay that is giovanni sartori that was uh, uh, the father of the modern italian political science for him an empirical and applicable science and he was born in 1924 and died five years ago. He was uh, the first full professor of the discipline in Italy in 1965 at the University of Florence, and he was the founder of the Rivista Italiana di Scienza Politica. But we will see uh, that in the 70s, he will move to the United States, first at Stanford and then at Columbia. But I start uh, reading my presentation so we can go to the other uh, pictures. Yes, the, the, the next one. Okay. In Italy, journals dealing with politics are not lacking. Indeed, they abound. But what is lacking, or has been lacking, is a political science journal, that is to say, one expressly and specifically destined to the study of politics sub specie scienze. Thus, in April 1971, Giovanni Sartori wrote in his editorial presenting the Rivista Italiana di Scienza Politica, RISP, a new four monthly journal he founded and directed published by the Bolognese Publishing House in Mulino. The name Rivista Italiana di Scienza Politica, admitted Sartori, does not stand out for its originality. We are preceded by at least two homologous journals of illustrious tradition, the American Political Science Review, which date back to 1906, and the Revue Française des Sciences Politique. However, our journal will, do, will not imitate either model. The American prototype is now extremely technicalized. The French prototype remains, to our taste, too colorful and syncretistic. The Rivista Italiana di Scienza Politica is in the middle, less technical than the North American model and more rigorous than the French one. Born in Florence, we can uh, come back to the slide number three. So we have Sartori, the image of Sartori. The, 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 the... Okay, okay uh, it's okay. Born in Florence in 1924 and passed away in Rome in 2017, five years ago, Sartori is the acknowledged father of contemporary Italian political science. In Italy, the discipline was actually born in 1896, the year of publication, in the midst of the positive stage, of Gaetano Mosca's Elements of Political Science. The new discipline aimed at empirically investigating political phenomena through the observation and the rigorous study of history but it was soon stifled by new currents of thought refractory to empiricism, which had spread in Italy since the early 20th century, idealistic philosophy and legal formalism. Fascism too, after its rise to power in October 1922, opposed political science because, as Norberto Bobbio wrote, like all polystates in, in this world, it could not allow the free development of the social sciences. The study and teaching relating to the state was the exclusive monopoly of jurists. No professorships were established in political science, but in state doctrine. 
When, in November 1946, the young Sartori graduated in political science at the Cesare Alfieri faculty in Florence, the oldest school of political science in Italy, discussing a thesis on state doctrine, political science in Italy was therefore a neglected discipline with no academic recognition. A self-taught political scientist with a solid philosophical background behind him, Sartori spent a study period of a year in New York in 1949 on a postgraduate scholarship shuttling between Columbia University and the New School of Social Research. This was a fundamental experience for his education, during which he had his first intense exposure to American political science, much more flourishing than in Italy and in the midst of the behaviorist revolution. He was then strongly influenced by American political science, even though he would never follow behaviorism. Sartori was a liberal and anti-communist and a great admirer of American democracy. For him, the United States was the model par excellence of representative democracy. He particularly appreciated the pragmatic mentality of the American people, at the antipodes from the rationalistic mentality typical of Europeans. Between Europeans and Americans, Sartori saw a profound cultural divergence. For Europeans, what was true in theory also had to be true in practice. If the real world did not, did not work according to the prediction of theorists in economics, as in politics, or in any other field, it was the real world that was in error. The Americans, on the other hand, looked at, looked at reality and drew conclusions from it. If reality changed, so did the conclusions. Sartori's conception of political science as an empirical and applicable science, hence a practical knowledge, had a clear American matrix, although, as mentioned above, it did not share the behaviorist view of the discipline, nor the quantitative research methods used by behaviorist political scientists. He argued that political science in the United States had let go of the relationship between theory and practice in order to focus only on the relationship between theory and research. Following this path, Sartori said, theory has atrophied and turned into mere research design. Research itself has become an end in itself the question, science for what, was ignored and, in the end, little remained beyond the operationalization, quantification or statistical treatment of an increasing amount of, that, amount of data. I have always tried to resist this. In 1950s and in 1960s, Sartori, together with Norberto Bobbio, the eminent philosopher of law born in Turin in 1909, was the architect of the rebirth of Italian political science and of its academic legitimization. The foundation of the Rivista Italiana di Scienza Politica in 1971 represented, represented a turning point that marked the institutionalization of the resurrected discipline. But its birth, as Gianfranco Pasquino, a pupil of Bobbio and Sartori, and the first journal's managing editor stated in 2013, was also important because RISP gave evidence to the variety of topics, scholars, and bibliographies then unknown in the Italian province. Thanks to his extensive network of contacts, Sartori, who had been elected in 1967 to the Executive Committee of the International Political Science Association, was able to get articles from his colleagues, from his colleagues in advance, and also from promising young, young scholars, for example, Aaron Leipard. This showed that political science was not only the American science of politics and that the discipline was cultivated also in other Northern European countries, such as Holland, Norway and England. However, if political science was not only American, the American political science was certainly the hegemonical one. In the first issue of RISP, and here in the picture we have the table of contents of this first issue, in the first issue of RISP, an inquiry on the American political science in the early 1970s pointed out that, that in 1966, the American Political Science Association had over 10,000 members, and that in 1968, the circulation of the American Political Science Review was around 20,000. In Italy, at the beginning of the 1970s, there was only one tenure professor, Sartori, and the first competition, concorso, for the professorships in the discipline was to be held in 1971, the same year of the birth of RISP, on which the supremacy of American political science was clear. In the first issue, April 1971, 
Sartori's opening article on comparative politics, for him the core of the discipline, was followed by two essays and one research paper. The first essay was by Aaron Leipart, mentioned earlier, who was Dutch, but he had got his PhD in, in the United States at Yale University in 1963. And in America, he would have carried out almost his entire academic career until becoming a US citizen. The second essay was by George Graham Jr., a political scientist from Vanderbilt University. And the research paper was by Samuel Barnes of the University of Michigan, Ann Arbor. If we then look at the book reviews, the first one reviewed was Politics and Government, How People Decide Their Fate by Karl Deutsch, an eminent professor from Harvard University. The second one, Citizens, Elections, Parties, Approaches to the Comparative Study of the Process of Development, was by the equally eminent Norwegian political scientist Stein Rockan, a book published in both Oslo and New York. And then there were five more books, all edited or written by American authors and published in the United States. The second issue of RISP, August 1971, opened with, with an essay by Gabriel Olmond, the eminent professor from Stanford University, on strategies for the study of political development. There was also in the same issue an article by Peter Merkel from the University of California, Santa Barbara, on party members and society in West Germany and Italy. In the third issue of RISP, December 1971, we find an, opin an, opinion, an opening article by the Italian political scientist Giuseppe Di Palma, who was born in Calabria, Italy. Graduated in law in Padua in 1956, since 1964, Di Palma had been living in Berkeley, California, where he got his PhD in political science in 1967, and where Di Palma would carry out his entire academic career, and as Leipart, he also would acquire the American citizenship. Also in this issue, there was a research paper by another American political scientist, Paul Abramson from Michigan State University. The topic was the changed role of social class in Western Europe. In the paper, the author documented and explained the declining relationship between social class and partisan preference in Germany, France, and Italy. We can move to the slide number six. Uh, next. Okay. On the wall, the first three years of RISP, 1971, 1972, and 1973, we can say that the Italian authors, mostly young scholars at the beginning of their university careers, prevailed. But the presence of at least one or more American authors, or if not American, at least with an academic position in America, was constant in every issue. While in the book reviews, American books prevailed by far among which at least one deserves to be mentioned here, the popular anthology edited by Ch James Charlesworth, Contemporary Political Analysis, published in the United States in 1967 and translated into Italian by Il Mulino in 1971 with the title Teoria e Metodi in Scienza Politica. It was reviewed by, in the first issue of RISP in 1972. This anthology, wrote the reviewer, hosts the contributions of some of the leading American political scientists and presents a fairly clear and in essence a fairly complete picture of the most important approaches to, comp to contemporary political science, including the mathematical approach, systems theory, decision formation theory, game theory and communication theory, technical approaches which, by adopting the most recent scientific discoveries and instruments, attempt to make the study of politics a science that comes ever closer to the canons of precision and rigor proper to the physical natural sciences. We can move to the next picture. In the first issue of RISP in 1974, one of the aforementioned approaches was applied, that of decision formation theory. It was a monographic issue, the first since the founding of the journal, on the theme of collective decisions, modalities, costs, risks, and effects of collective decisions in a political system. A truly technical subject, therefore, that Sartori had already addressed in one of his courses at the University of Florence. Sartori knew that he had strayed from its original intention, that of not conforming to the hyper-specialist American political science. So much so, we can move to the other picture. The next, okay. So much so that on June 5th, 1974, 
He wrote to Norberto Bobbio in the picture. We have Bobbio on the right uh, and the young Sartori on the left. Bobbio was uh, 14 years older than Sartori. So much so that on June 5th, 1974, he wrote to Norberto Bobbio to ask him for his opinion on the issue that had just come out, in which, Sartori admitted, I have perhaps gone too far into technic technicalities. Moreover, Sartori asked to Bobbio if he had any contributions for the journal, for the next issues of the journal. Bobbio, who, who held a chair in political philosophy, but had taught political science in previous years, replied on June, on June 12, 1974, saying that he usually received and read RISP, 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 but not yet the latest issue, which appeared to him a bit hostile and difficult to digest. He then thanks Sartori for having invited him again to collaborate with the journal. But the problem, Bobby added, is, is that while you are becoming more and more technical, I am becoming, after falling back into the arms of political philosophy, more and more generic. And then I see appearing more and more beneath the magnificent devices of political science and the social and political engineers, the demonic face of the power. Can we really say that we have looked at this face in all these years of increasingly refined political science? Bobbio informed Sartori of a recent visit he had received in Turin by David Apter, a political scientist from Yale University, who had given two seminars in Turin. Intelligent, likable, brilliant, but his combinatorial eclecticism, Bobby observed, seemed to me more an exercise in bravura than an effective and fruitful way of getting to the earth of the problems. It seems to me that politology has seen by lacking realism. By remaining on the, surfa by remaining on the surface, we explain nothing. And now, if we make a severe examination of conscience, we must recognize that we have allowed ourselves to be attracted by what was most easily visible and have closed our eyes to what lies behind. In short, we have allowed ourselves to be attracted more by the playful aspect of politics than by its tragic aspect. Yet the latter, at least in Italy, was clear, clearly visible to all. Two weeks earlier, on May 28, 1974, eight people had died and 102 others had been injured in a neo-fascist attack in Brescia, Lombardy. The terrorist season in Italy had begun with the Piazza Fontana bombing in Milan on December 12, 1969, 17 dead and 88 injured. The entire 1970s, the so-called Anni di Piombo years of lead, were marked by political violence, culminating with the kidnapping and murder of Aldo Moro in 1978 by the Red Brigades. For part of the, for part of the public opinion and for the left-wing press, deviant sectors of the state were behind the bombing, the bombing attacks. They spoke of a strategy of tension put in place by right-wing forces to undermine the foundations of the democratic state and favor authoritarian solution. Bobbio himself, in January 1970, in the aftermath of the Piazza Fontana bombing, for which anarchist militants were blamed, a trade that turned out to be unfounded, had written an article on state violence. In that article, Bobbio pointed out that violence was not only that of the street protest of student, students and workers. Violence, he said, could also hide itself behind the decorous facade of the democratic institutions. There was therefore an occult dimension of politics, which Bobbio argue, argued in his letter to Sartori, political scientists could not perceive if they did not look at the real government that was the sub-government. In other words, Bobbio was talking about the hidden power, the invisible power, or the non-democratic power, as he defined democracy as the government of visible power, that is, government whose acts are carried out in public, under the control of public opinion. Sartori, on July 15, 1974, replied to Bobbio, reassuring him that only the first issue of RISP of the tier would be so technical, adding, however, that his emphasis on technical aspect of the discipline was dictated by well-founded concerns in a context such as of Italy of legitimacy and seriousness. We can move to the other picture, okay. Actually, by the mid-1970s, 
Italian political science, Italian political science was growing rapidly and it was academically fully legitimized. A community of young scholars was born and that community would expand itself in the following years. Italian political sciences were also gaining visibility in the national public debate. In October 1974, for example, the historian Giuseppe Galasso, who had a deep knowledge of Anglo-Saxon political science, published on the Espresso, and we have, this is the article, published on the Espresso, the most popular Italian weekly, an inquiry on the crisis of the Italian political system, a blocked system with no possibility of alternation in government, given the presence in opposition of the largest communist party in Western Europe, in which he interviewed several political scientists, among them Sartori. And in 1976, we can move to the other picture, the next picture. And in 1976, it made a sensation the transferring of Sartori from the University of Florence to Stanford University in California, where a chair in political science had been offered to him. In the same year, 1976, in which in Italy, the Communist Party, an anti-system party, according to Sartori, got 34% of the vote in the general election four points behind the Christian Democrats, the leading party with 38%. Sartori defined himself as a man from the periphery who had always lived in Florence and who disliked Rome because his ideal city was the city on a human scale. However, he had decided to move because he was now disenchanted with the Italian university. During the years of student protest in the, late, in the late 60s, Sartori had been the dean of the Cesare Alfieri, the Florentine Faculty of Political Science, from 1969 to 1971. He had firmly opposed the student movement, but after that difficult experience, he no longer considered the Italian university an ideal place to study and teach. And the article in the picture is entitled, I, I was escaped to live in peace. So it's very explicative. In the United States, Sartori would remain until 1992, first at Stanford and from 1979 at Columbia University in New York. Throughout, throughout this period, he would maintain the directorship of RISP, which he would leave in 2004 at the, age, at the age of 80. However, although Sartori was, as we have previously said, an admirer of America and of its pragmatic culture, he would never fully integrate himself into the American academic. He never political science, Czech political scientist Michael Kubat recently wrote. He always stood at a distance. He resembled the character of Sting's 1987 hit Englishman in New York. Englishman in New York, who as a legal alien prefers tea to coffee, makes his toast in a different way and speaks with a foreign accent. Sartori felt and behaved in a similar way. Only the nationality was different, not Englishman in New York, but Italian in New York. He was, he was very much aware of this and years later recollected that his work has never made a splash on American soil. This was due to the fact that he, as mentioned before, had not converted to behaviorism and never would, and never made the quantitative and hyper-technical research methods of that school his own. Sartori's empiricism and the scientific nature of his work were entirely different. Political research should be contextual. That is, it should not avoid historical, cultural, linguistic, and other circumstances. It should be usable in practice and focused on solving problems, not giving precedence to questions of methodology and research, and research techniques. The goal of political research should be not gathering data, data and modeling, but rather the creation of concepts and theories through comparative research. Sartori himself emphasized with a certain pride, we can say, how he had not become Americanized despite his move to the United States. And just as proudly in April 1998, 1980, on the 10th anniversary of RISP, Sartori claimed to have successfully followed the route indicated in the first issue of the journal, an intermediate route, he wrote, that excludes that excludes both ultra specialization and amateurism, the two minute, but also the two general. We have welcomed with equal sympathy the theorizing political scientist and the mathematizing political scientist, but curbing their excesses, that is always careful to maintain an identity for the discipline we profess. The success of the review shows, it seems to me, 
that is that this identity has been maintained and is recognized by us. In reality, as the first issue of 1974 showed, technical excesses have not always been curbed. And in any cases, and, and in any case, the American influence on Italian political science had been pervasive and penetrating since its rebirth. The discipline in Italy had taken off by becoming Americanized. Italian scholars, we can move to the next uh, picture. Italian scholars wondered about this dependence on America. In May 1984, an important conference on the perspective of, of Italian political science was held in Milan, which was also attended by Sartori, who had, who had come especially from the United States. It was only natural that an hegemonic science such as American political science should have imposed itself as a model, indicated themes and approaches. And it was beyond question that Italy was peripheral to the United States. This was evident in all international bibliographies, where citation, citations of Italian works were, also for linguistic reasons, generally very few. But Joseph La Palombara, in the picture, an American political scientist of Italian origin at Yale University, while noting that the American influence had been considerable, found that Italian political science, as practiced, had a parish-like character. This was an ambiguity, according to La Parombara, found in the pages of RISP. It is well known, he stated, that Italian political scientists study Italian politics almost exclusive, ex exclusively. It is, it is striking that in the 13 years since the founding of the Rivista Italiana di Scienza Politica, from 1971 to 1984, only one article by an Italian scholar on the American political process has appeared. These limitations do not only refer to, the, to studies on the United States, but also to the lack of research on Western European countries, not to mention Latin America or Asia. Sartori, at the Milan conference, claimed for his part the clear progress made, made by Italian political science. Since the 1950s, he observed, since he himself had personally committed himself to the relaunching of the discipline, the road traveled had been great and fruitful. American political science too had progressed, over, had progressed over the same period of time, but had flattened out. The average level of American political scientists compared to the past had risen. Had risen. It was good, but also averaged out. Sartori, moreover, saw a growing gulf between the United States and Europe and a concomitant loss of difference of the new European political science to the American one. But the configuration of relations between the new and old world was, in his view, asymmetrical. The Americans, said Sartori, are single-minded, they read almost only themselves, they are relatively homogeneous and they are a continent unto themselves. Europeans are fragmented, they are polyglots, the read and reciprocated Americans, and thus enjoy an advantage that Americans are losing, cross-fertilization, which does not detract, Sartori added, from the fact that the bulk of resources and the universities that really function at high level remain concentrated in the United States. In the mid-1980s, Sartori showed apprehension for the path taken by the discipline in the United States, where, he said, from behaviorism, they, they had entered in lockstep with quantification, which he blamed because it was an end in itself and without any real practical feedback. We can move to the other picture. Okay. While in December 1990, celebrating the 20th anniversary of RISP, he again welcomed the progress made by Italian political science. For political science in Italy, he said, these 20 years have been important, indeed decisive. In 1971, we were only a dozen or so, easily attacked and captured. Today, we are a respected discipline. The past 20 years have been the years of growth and consolidation, the years that made political science as it is today in Italy. Of this growth and consolidation, RISP, as it is called among us, has been an integral part, a reflection, but also a source. Together with the discipline, the journals also grown, has also grown, let us continue in this way. The year before, on November 9, 1989, the Berlin, Wall, the Berlin Wall had come down. The Cold War was coming to an end. And with the defeat of communism, according to Sartori, one, one could indeed speak of the end of ideologies. Almost prophetically, however, he warned that what, what was unfolding would be the era of populism and video politics. In August 1989, 
in Rare ISP, he had published an essay on the power of television in which he anticipated the thesis he would develop in his book Homo Videns, a bestseller published in Italy in 1997, translated into many languages, but not into English. It never came out in the United States, unlike all, uh, all his other major books, two of which were written directly in English and never translated into Italian. Sartori believed that television was transforming Homo sapiens, accustomed to reading written text, into Homo videns, in which the world was displaced by the image. Television was changing man's nature, reducing his capacity for abstraction and learning, to the serious detriment of democracy, whose vitality was ensured by an autonomous and an independent public opinion composed of well-informed citizens. This pessimism, we can move to the last picture. Okay, Budapest. This pessimism about the fate of man and democracy was accompanied by pessimism about the future of American political science. At the end of October 2000, at a conference in Budapest on 10 years in freedom, transition and consolidation on democracy in Central Europe, Sartori wondered again, 16 years after the Milan Conference of 1984, where the discipline, the mainstream American type political science was going. Sartori acknowledged that he too had been somewhat swallowed up by our big brother, the American type political science, in the sense that for some 30 years, first as a visiting professor from, 1970, from 1964, then from 1976 to 1992 as a full professor, he had thought in the United States benefiting from that American exposure. But he also claimed that he had always resisted, was still resisting American influence. The American type political science, he claimed, had in fact adopted an unsuited model of science drawn from the hard exact sciences and had failed to establish its own identity as a soft science by failing to establish its own distinctive methodology. To be sure, Sartori added, my shelves are inundated by books who study this methodology of the social sciences. But these works simply address research techniques and statistical processing. They have almost nothing to do with the method of logos, with the method of thinking. So, why, so we now have a dismal science that lacks logical method and indeed ignores poor and simple logic. In conclusion, Sartori asserted that American type political science, the mainstream political science, was going nowhere. It is an ever growing giant with feet of clay, visit to believe the annual meetings of the American Political Science Association. It is an experience of unending dullness, or it to believe the legible of, and or massively irrelevant American political science review. The alternative, or at least the alternative for which aside, is to resist the quantification of the discipline, briefly say, think before counting, and also use logic in thinking.